And welcome to Biggie Power. Honda Jazz 1.4. Very nice. Oil and filter change. Let's do it. Whee! First thing I'm doing right now is allowing the engine to warm up. Um, it doesn't need to be absolutely roasting hot, but you need to ensure, I would say, in my personal opinion, that the RPM has dropped down. It's currently quite high, about 1200 RPM. So it's still just keeping the RPM high to warm itself up. Once that's dropped down and once that symbol's gone off there, it's warm enough to do all the oil change. You want the oil to be thin enough uh, with it being warm that it'll just nicely drop down and drain out of all the orifices. So do that first. As I say, you won't want it smoking hot. I don't, I don't like the idea of draining oil out of an engine that's absolutely on fire. So get it warm. Next step, raise your vehicle high enough and safely to get your drain tray underneath and be able to get you underneath to undo drain plug. Drain tray ready. Underneath. To help the oil drain, I always like to just lift the dist dipstick up slightly and just crack off the filler cap, like so. Now Honda, very kindly, just so you're not confused, have written engine oil right where the engine oil drain plug is. That's handy. So we've got a 17 mil spanner, got some rag, handy, because, you know, oil is going to go <coughs> So our drain tray is underneath that. And we're going to hold one hand on the end of the spanner that's on the plug and the other end here, give it a tap and it's loose, see? Shouldn't be very tight at all. Keep that in mind when you do it back up again. And then we just slowly start lifting out the plug. Having a rag ready. Keep a bit of pressure on the drain plug till you get to the point where you feel like the thread skips. Which I just did then. And I know I'm about to drain the oil. And then you can gently lift the plug away let it drain into your tray. Clean off the plug. There we go. This one doesn't have a replaceable seal on it. Leave that over there. And let's get the oil filter off while we're here, shall we? A few different methods of removing an oil filter. You've got the claw method, the little strap. I like these. These are very handy. The old chain, the redneck method. Boosh! I prefer to be a man and use this. So let's do that. Very handy. So get yourself in a good position. Ensure that you're going to capture any dribbles. And you want to undo the dry oil uh, filter by, say, a quarter half turn until it starts dribbling. Let the dribbling pretty much finish and then spin the rest of the oil filter off and drop them in your oil tray. Just like that. There we go. <coughs> it was a joke about my hand. You might need the strap. Depends how long it's been on there. So. So yeah, I'm too weak this morning. Just gonna get the strap on there and just give that a wiggle. As it started, strap out the way and just let that come undone a little bit until you see oil dribbling out. I prefer just to let that drain out a little bit before I move the oil filter. You don't want that dropping in a big bucket of oil. Bad times. Okay, and the oil filter will be still full of oil, or three quarters of the way, so then just tip it upside down, let that drain out. Okay, now go and have a cup of tea, or continue with the rest of your service by inspecting the vehicle. And then we'll come back later, when this is finished dribbling everywhere. Something to bear in mind is, as you can see by the angle of the car at the moment, we actually would like to level the car. So I tend to, at this point, also kind of drop it back on the ground, as long as there's clearance for your drain tray, so you get the most amount of oil out of that sump. Okay, so now the oil has had sufficient time to drain, we're going to clean up the oil filter flange surface 
on the block. Make sure the old oil filter seal, rubber seal, is not there. That is an easy mistake to make and will make a heck of a mess. It only happens when the oil seal hasn't been greased, uh, hasn't been oiled first and it's really old. With our new oil filter, which is a PH5317, we have done as instructed on there, put a little bit of the new oil on the rubber gasket. Then we're just going to gently spin that oil filter on by hand and tighten my hands like 12 millimetres tightening torque or something silly. It's really not very much. Quite surprising really. But there we go. Okay. So by hand, you don't need any tools, just do it as tight as you can grip it by hand. That'll be plenty enough. Okay. When we come to the drain plug, what we're going to do is move our drain out of the way. It's not dripping anymore. It's not dripping anymore. And give that a nice clean up. So that clean is quite a good idea once I'm finished. We get our drain plug. Make sure that's nice and clean. Now this is 39 newton meters of fishing. It's been through a few torque cycles, so be gentle with it. It's not that much. If you haven't got a torque wrench, don't worry. You'll be able to feel, I hope, when it goes tight, just give it that extra pinch. And don't use anything bigger than that spider. So don't be leaning on it with a massive scaffold bar. Right, so see that? It went tight, I gave it an extra punch. But we will get the old talky wrenchy menchy in here. Give it a mention. Here we go. 39 it's set to. Let's see what it does. There we go. So it's pretty much there anyway. There we go. So that's oil drained, oil filter changed. Let's go up the top, level the car, and get the new oil in. So for refilling, I like to keep that dipstick out. Just, I don't know why, I just do. No point putting it back in yet. And always use a funnel where you can. Don't try and be an oil filling hero. You'll just make a big old mess and it'll just spill down and it'll slip on the belts and it'll burn and it'll stink and it'll be horrible. 3.6 litres this takes, so I'm gonna put three and a half in and then check. So let's do that. Okay, oil fill the cap on, put the dipstick in, let's start it up, make sure oil light goes off, and then top up. Check top up as necessary. What I mean by that is, start the engine, oil light goes off, Turn the engine off, wait 30 seconds, check the dipstick, make sure it's at the maximum. If it's not, top it up a little bit more, repeat the process until it's at the maximum. Do not overfill. So after we've repeated that process to top up and check, after we ran the engine, fill the filter, there it is. Difficult to tell because it's so clean, that's bob on that top mark. So that's good. Final thing to do, in my opinion. Maybe not yours, but definitely in my opinion. Would we'll be just to check underneath. <gasps> yep, no leaks. Make sure there's no leaks from the plug or the filter. Clean up any dribbles you've probably made, topping it up, and feel good about yourself. Make a mark somewhere of the mileage and the date that you changed your oil and your filter so that in future you can make sure you do it at the right time. It's the cheapest thing you can do to preserve the life of your engine and your vehicle. So go ahead and do an oil change today. Yay! <laughs>